What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the middle of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, there is one stock that I bought today that I want to go over and break down on a technical basis, and I do want to also go over some news regarding the FOMC meeting, the Federal Reserve regarding the interest rates. And of course, we're going to break down natural gas, talk about some weather here ahead of the report that does come out tomorrow. So before we do get into all of this good stuff, all I ask from you is if you enjoy this video, you find value from this video, go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And I want to challenge you guys. I haven't done a like challenge in a long time. Can we get 150 likes? That's a bit ambitious, but can we get 150 likes? Let's see. So go hit that like and also join our Strive Smart Facebook group and our Strive Smart Discord group chat. Link down below if you want to be further connected with our community. So let's get into it. Starting off here with the S&P 500. This thing is currently up $7.57 right now, up 0.24% with about 15 minutes left in the markets today. And we actually had some pretty choppy action in this market today guys. If we pull up this one day, one minute, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We gapped up, saw a pretty aggressive bull push this morning, ultimately sold off aggressively for a couple of hours after that. And then pretty much once that FOMC meeting started, um, you know, the S&P and the markets in general have been coming up like crazy. We went from 31.33 up to around 31.43. I guess that's not crazy, but still, it's a pretty decent swing here and uh, again the markets were really really choppy today and it seems like one thing that is good for these markets on a technical basis is the fact that we're breaking out of this downtrend if you guys remember over the past couple of days there's been a lot of tension in the markets uncertainty and that's why the markets have been coming down due to the trade war deadline that is on December 15th and on December 15th 160 165 billion dollars, something like that, worth of tariffs, they're supposed to go into effect. And in my opinion, if they go into effect, the markets will tank. But a lot of us, probably 90% of us out there, could agree that they're going to be delayed. And if they are delayed, which again, I think they are, a bunch of you guys agree with me probably that they will be, I think these markets will continue to push up here. And if we drag out a bit further back to that hourly chart, you can see the break of the pattern even better. Better. So three straight days of red, or actually, was this three? I guess you can say it was two uh, two straight days of red, but we kind of descended on this day on the 6th of December as well. So two, three days of red, but now we're finally looking to close a day green up a quarter percent again here on the S&P 500. So that is pretty good. So let's talk about very quickly some news regarding the Federal Reserve and these interest rates. Mr. Powell has indicated there is a very high bar for the Fed to reverse any of its recent cuts by raising rates. And officials have indicated that they still see risks of weaker than expected growth in the economy in the months ahead. This means that while officials are comfortable leaving rates on hold, they are still more likely to cut them than to raise them. Mr. Powell has said the economic outlook would need to weaken materially for the Fed to consider lowering rates further. His press conference is the most likely venue for any cues about whether this has changed, but recent data, including soft manufacturing activity but strong hiring, offer little reason for him to recast this message. And if you guys don't know, right now the federal funds rate is between 1.5 to 1.75%, and the interest rates 
have been cut in the past three meetings. So the federal funds rate was about 2.5%, I believe, one year ago. And again, right now, it's between that 1.5. I think it's actually closer to that 1.75 level. And if you guys saw the Fed meeting today and kind of the announcement, the Fed's really not looking to decrease the rates further here in 2020. Because again, we had three rate hikes, or rather rate decreases in the past three meetings, obviously, right? And now he's looking to be a bit more um, stable with the rates, which Trump at the end of the day hates because we all know Trump goes on Twitter. He always calls out Jerome Powell about slashing. He wants him to slash, slash, slash the rates and be more aggressive with it. So I'm sure he's not liking this decision um, too much, but in the near future, we don't really see any rate cuts coming, which shows that this economy might be a bit more stable than we think, right? So let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Now let's talk about the Dow very quickly. This thing's not really doing much at all. Right now, down about 0.01%, down $4.15, really no movement whatsoever. But if we go to this five-day, five-minute, just like the S&P, P, we're trying to break out of this downtrend that we've been on over the past two to three days. And it seems like we are doing that as we're breaking above this resistance. We broke the 50 SMA and it seems like we're trying to close above this 180 SMA. Now we're kind of uh, pushing a bit, if you can see that, up 17 points, close to 0.1% in the green. So with this uh, strong push, if we close strong, which we probably will here, um, that's a pretty bullish close, in my opinion, for the Dow Jones. But remember, the hourly chart still doesn't look good, but we're trending above the moving averages, both the 180 and the 50. We held that 50 today at a higher low. So although the overall picture doesn't look great, if we zoom in a little bit and kind of look at the past couple of days, it does seem like the Dow and the S&P, and honestly, the markets in general, they're slowly recovering from this fallout. But this could completely blow itself up again if those tariffs go into effect. So watch the tariffs. If they get delayed, in my opinion, there's going to be another all-time high in the stock market. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ. This one's currently up 40 points right now, up 0.45%, doing the best out of the three major indexes that I track here on this channel. And if we zoom in a bit on the five-day, five-minute, you can see a clear break of trend on the NASDAQ. We had a couple of red days as you guys saw in the Dow and the S&P but ever since that bottoming out point at around uh, what was that the 10th of December ever since then it seems like we've broken out of moving averages both the 180 and the 50 SMA and we've been slowly making those higher lows and we just pushed to a higher high here after the FOMC meeting so this is an extremely bullish close in the NASDAQ and if we pull up that hourly chart you can see we're actually trending above all moving averages on this chart as well, um, just like the Dow Jones. And let me double check the S&P. Um, so yeah, all these markets at this point, S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, they're looking pretty bullish based on this close and based on the action in general in today's session. So let me know down below, what are your thoughts on that? Now let's talk about what I did today and what stock I'm buying right now. So I ended up buying a little bit of PayPal today, ticker symbol PYPL. And this kind of looks like a similar pattern to the S&P, right? If we pull the S&P up on a smaller scale, we were downtrending for a couple of days and now we're breaking out. Going back to PayPal, that's exactly what we're seeing. We were downtrending for a couple of more days than the S&P. It was about a week, week and a half. And now we're breaking out of that downtrend, which is very attractive in my personal opinion. And obviously, it led to me taking a position, an initial position in PayPal this morning, right? Really, it wasn't this, eh, was it this morning? No, it was not this morning. It was more towards, um, you know, yeah, I guess you can say it was this morning because it was um, right around 1030. More towards noon is where I started building the bulkier size of my position. So I took, I think, three different positions here on PayPal. So ended up getting in initially at around 1030 a.m., right around 104.20. 
20. And this is mostly because, again, we're breaking that downtrend. This is a straight breakout, straight shoot breakout on PayPal, breaking the moving averages. It's looking extremely bullish, right? So that prompted me initial position 1030 right around here. We spiked up, right? Pulled down, added a little bit more. Again, the bulkier size of my position was right here, bought two individual times. Now I'm in and just holding at this point, right? And I plan on holding this one until we get to that resistance at around, I believe, $110 or rather $108. And above that is the 111, 110 area. So right now I'm in PayPal. I do have a bit of buffer built into the position, which means I have some cushions since you can clearly see this thing has ran up like crazy ever since I've gotten into the position, right? So average cost right around here. Right now, I think I'm up like close to a percent, one percent. And this is not meant to be a day trade. Sure, I can end up taking my profits here if I wanted to. But again, looking on that hourly chart and what I've been talking about with PayPal here over the past couple of videos, I see this being extremely bullish, especially on the four hour chart since we held that 180 SMA at a higher low. And it seems like we're just overall continuing the uh, uptrend that we've been on. So first sell again, about 108 bucks. So from where I'm in right now up to 108, that could be around three to about a 3.5% potential for profit, right? Up above that, up to about 112, who knows? I might scale out at 108. And if we get a pop above 108, I might hold some shares and sell the rest at 112. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. But again, we'll play it by ear based on what ends up happening. But let's say it does get to 112, that's going to be around a six to 7% profit on on PayPal. So all I really did today, guys, is buy some PayPal a couple of different times and no day trading for me. Like I've mentioned in these videos, I've been a bit more cautious, a bit more selective with what stocks I'm buying, where I'm putting my money because of this tariff situation and this deadline coming up here in a couple of days. I believe the deadline um, is on Sunday, this Sunday in about three, four days from now. So very important in my eyes to be cautious around around time periods like this. And you don't have to be cautious because I'm being cautious, but I'm just a bit more conservative than a lot more uh, people out there, which is why I'm just simply sitting on a lot of cash, waiting to add more in certain swings, like I've mentioned, once they confirm and once we get some more detail, whether these tariffs are going to get delayed or they're actually going into effect. So let's break down you gas, D gas, natural gas. Let's see what ended up going down in that space today, pulling up NGF20 first and foremost. You guys can see, oops, there's an extra slash in there. You guys can see this went down about 0.8% today, heading into the report tomorrow, down almost two cents here, um, nearing the close of the stock market in about two minutes. And today's price action, if I'm being brutally honest with you all, and you can probably see it for yourselves, this is not looking too good for you guys, right? This is favoring D gas, and it's because it seems like we're getting rejected yet again under that 50 SMA at a lower high, and it seems like we want to maybe push down and fill the gap back down to maybe 220, maybe down to 215. And who knows if we get a bad bearish report tomorrow, a bearish report for natural gas, this could very well happen tomorrow, Friday, maybe even over the weekend, right? That lower low. And from there, we'd obviously end up reevaluating the situation and kind of seeing what we would do from there. But the way the technicals are looking and the way things are setting up heading into tomorrow, guys. I would lie to you. I would be lying to you if I said this is looking good for you guys, right? And D-Gaz, I've been mentioning this in these videos. That's the one I'm favoring and I've been favoring over the past couple of weeks here, but we'll take a look at some weather in a minute or two that could end up fluctuating what happens in the near term in terms of you guys and D-Gaz. So let's pull up you guys, UGAZ. This one went down 25 cents today, down about 3%. Seems like just like natural gas, we are seeing 
seeing rejection resistance under that 50 SMA looking like it is trying to make that lower high so that's not a good sign and I'm looking to see again what the reports going to be like tomorrow that could fluctuate this up or down very very aggressively and if we pull up D gas here guys ticker symbol DGAZ you can see how much more bullish this is looking like and the bullish close that we just saw here heading into the close of the market up five dollars today up 2.9 percent we held a higher low on top of that EMA we're also maintaining that EMA or rather that 50 SMA as a support and the general $170 area so I'm thinking tomorrow again if that NG um, if those NG contracts dump I'm thinking 180, anything above that could be breakout area, a breakout zone for DGAS where it could even run back up to 200 bucks, which it did a couple of months ago um, if you guys are looking at the price action here. So overall, in terms of you guys, DGAS, those are kind of some thoughts that are going through my head right now in terms of technicals. DGAS does look a lot better, but let's talk about some weather here that could impact some few future natural gas reports and maybe fluctuate you guys to the upside here. So from December 11th through the 17th, a strong cold shot will sweep impact the Midwest and Northeast into Thursday with chilly lows of negative 20s to 20s for strong demand. It's also a bit cooler across Texas and the South as a second cool front pushes through with highs of 40s and to lower 60s. High pressure will quickly build across the U.S. Friday through Saturday with highs of 40s to 70s for a swing back to light national demand. Although increasing again early next week as cooling returns across many regions of the U.S., coldest across the Midwest and Northeast as lows of zeros to 20s return. Overall, demand will be high today, moderate this weekend, and back to high early next week. So we all know at this point the natural gas storage reports, they are actually behind a week so the data we're going to get tomorrow is going to be not for this week we're in right now but the previous week so it's delayed by one week so the weather that we're seeing in these next couple of days, we might not see that in the natural gas inventory report for maybe two weeks from now. So that's the kind of weather that could end up stimulating some demand here for natural gas and thus pushing the prices up, which would in turn bring some potential to you gas. So those are some thoughts to consider here heading into maybe the next two weeks reports um, and kind of over these next couple of days in terms of the the weather. So let me know your thoughts about that down below in the comment section. Now let's talk about very quickly some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and that I've been getting a bunch of questions on. Starting off here with NEO ticker symbol NIO. And NEO, in my opinion, is looking bullish. And the price action today, the fact that we closed above this 50 SMA at a higher low from the previous, that is a pretty bullish close and a good sign in my opinion as well. Now, all I want to see from NEO is, yup, you guessed it, a break above 230, which is the resistance. That was a support from a couple of days ago, right? And I want to see a break above that 180 SMA. So if we get into 230, I think that's a straight shot to 240. And I've said this in many videos and in the group chat from 240, I can see it going up to $2.70 and maybe even beyond if we get Get above that level. But for now, I'm looking at 240 and then 270. Actually, 230 first, then 240. Once we break those levels, 270 is within reach. Another stock I'm watching here is NVIDIA, guys. And like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I want to see a break above $2 or rather $220 for this stock before I end up nibbling a position. And quite frankly, I want to see it hold 220 as a support, maybe for a couple of days, maybe a week before I enter into the position. And why do I like 220 that level a lot? It's because that is the next major resistance that we're 
we're seeing. And if we break that level, there's a huge gap where a swing trader like myself could make a pretty nice uh, chunk of money, right? So from 220 up to 250, that's around, or rather 240, which is the first level, that's around a 9% potential for profit. And from there up to 250, that's around 13%. So I'm waiting for that 220 break. That's going to give me the cue to start a position and hopefully we get consolidation and then a pop from there to add even more to the position. So NVIDIA, I'm liking this one. Shopify is another one that closed pretty bullish um, in my opinion today. We saw the break above 370 and that close above 370 is what I've been waiting for. So if we pull up that four hour chart, like I've been saying and like I've been waiting for, 370 is what we need to hold before we get to that next major level of resistance, which is around 390 to 400 bucks and then around 410 bucks. So this is a good sign, but not too good of a sign or not enough of a sign, enough of a confirmation for me to get in quite yet, but it is a good sign for now. Tomorrow, let's say we gap up aggressively. Let's say we spike out like that, you know, maybe try to get back to 380. That could be a bullish move that could initiate or, you know, allow me to initiate a position, then a break above 380 would where I'd at, would be where I'd add even more money. So Shopify, that's my thoughts on that. HD today sold off a bit um, pre-market. Um, actually, the whole day it sold off, down $3.90, down about 2%. So that's not looking too good because that pretty much solidifies this lower high under that 50 SMA. That solidifies that we didn't break out. So that's a pretty bearish sign here on Home Depot, but that's not discouraging me. I'm still watching it, being patient, because when that opportunity presents itself, and I think it will eventually, once we break above that 50 SMA, that's where I'm looking to add money into Home Depot. So overall, those are a couple of stocks that come in my head right now that I'm really watching and interested in trading. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. Atv is another one that's looking extremely bullish today, very bullish. And the fact that we closed above 56.40, 56.50, or the fact that we closed near that level, that gives me some hope because what I need to see here for a position, for me to take a position, is I need to see at V break $57 here because like NVIDIA, there's a lot of potential for ADV if it breaks the major resistance that it's at. You guys can see from 56, 57, roughly where we are right now, up to the next level of resistance at around $63. That's about a 10% potential for profit on ADV. And the truth is, guys, I'm already invested in Activision Blizzard, um, but I'm not holding it, or rather, I didn't get in quite yet in my swing account. So overall, I'm still long on ADV. V, right? But I'm waiting to get a swing position built in my swing account. Um, I figured to let you guys know that. Why not? Right? So overall, that is my thoughts on the markets, stocks and ETFs I'm watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And if you're interested in Webull and you want two free stocks, absolutely free, valued up to 1400 bucks, I I have a link down below where if you click that, sign up, put $100 into the account, you get two free stocks and I also get one free stock for you signing up through my link, just being completely transparent. So if you want that free money, that's linked down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always, peace out.